This year, 2018, has seen a lot of celebrations of what would have been Nelson Mandela's 100th birthday. And not just in South Africa, last month, the United Nations held the Nelson Mandela Peace Summit in New York City to celebrate his legacy. Nelson Mandela's legacy is twofold. He is honoured for being arguably the most distinguishable and the most influential figure in ending apartheid in South Africa and also for helping mould South Africa into the rainbow nation that it is today except South Africa is not a rainbow nation. South Africa's black population, which is its largest, can be divided into four ethnic groups. We have the we have the Sutu, which is made up of the Eli, Tswana and Sutu. We have the Venda, we have the Tonga and we have the Nguni, which is made up of the Kosa, Swati, Ndebele and Zulu. On top of that, we have the white and Asian population as well. And with South Africa having one of the largest economies in Africa, we have a large influx of people coming from other countries, bringing with them their own cultures and languages. All this comes together to make South Africa a very diverse country. During the apartheid era, the government divided the country up into homelands, which determined where people were going to live, based not just on their skin color, but on their ethnicity as well. Because of this, competition, hate, and discrimination between tribes was rampant, often disguised as cultural pride. Now fast forward to the end of apartheid. The new government made integration one of its main objectives and so the dream of a rainbow nation was born with Nelson Mandela at the helm as president. The homeland system was dismantled and all the more 11 most widely spoken languages in South Africa were adopted as official languages. Those languages were also adopted into mainstream media with equal representation being the ultimate goal. This was a veil. Yeah. In the midst of all this, the rest of the world started paying more attention to Africa and South Africa was at the forefront. This is possibly what prompted the government to try and adopt a more mainstream narrative or a more mainstream South African identity with an all-inclusive culture and backstory. Now, this, all, this sounds good on paper, but the reality of it was it brought forth a whole lot of cultural assimilation. Cultural assimilation is the process whereby individuals or groups of differing ethnic heritages are absorbed into the dominant culture of society. The process involves the assimilating group taking on the traits of the dominant group to such an extent where the two groups are socially indistinguishable from each other. South Africa's democracy is 24 this year and coming from a past as violent and segregated as we do makes integration a much harder objective to achieve. Now people are quick to point out and protest against the racism that still lingers but don't bring the same energy to the ethnic discrimination that is rampant. The basis of apartheid was that one group is better and more important than the rest. Now similarly although on a lesser scale in South Africa's search for a South African identity and a South African culture, the bigger ethnic groups are being acknowledged and represented at the expense of the other smaller ethnic groups. Isn't that just another incarnation of apartheid? Art is not lost though, not yet. If we can all learn to be more sensitive to the nuances surrounding culture and cultural identity, we can still heal and become an actual rainbow nation. Wouldn't that be a better way to honor Nelson Mandela's legacy?